I'm working on getting this TFT display working on the Super Mini Mega Tester using ESP32C3. Right now I have a demo running from the Adafruit library, and the one I'm using is similar to this, 1.54 inch, 240 by 240 SPI interface, and some of them have different pinouts on the header, and some of them seem to have an extra regulator where they can take VCC 3.3 or 5 volts. I'm running strictly at 3.3 because before I bought this display I have right now, I had another one and I broke it by connecting it to 5 volts. So I'm just going to keep it at 3.3. And these pins are labeled SCL and SDA. It looks like I squared C clock and data, but it's actually SPI master out data and clock. Then there's reset and some sort of control pin, a chip select, and then backlight. So another thing I learned, I have this red wire here on backlight and I connected it to 3.3. If I take it out, it doesn't work, and if I ground it, it doesn't work. So it has to go to 3.3 to turn on the display. So those are a few things to keep in mind with getting this display running with the ESP32C3. This demo just gets to this point, and then it goes invert screen back and forth, unless I want to reset and let it run again. So I'll push reset, and just let it run. So this is an informal video. It's probably going to be all over the place. This mega tester has the OLED up here, and the board itself is an experimental project, and it was never really designed with the intent of using a different display. So there's no 3.3 volt header pin that I can easily tap into. So I had to look at the schematic and locate anywhere that there's a 3.3 volt connection, like this capacitor C9 or one of these pull-up resistors, or the actual header pin on the module. So I just added a wire on C9, and I'm bringing that over here as 3.3 volts. Then all the other pins, I have a ground header, and there's GPIO headers here on both sides of this module for pins that I did not use in this design, but I made the pins available. So that's on header J1 and J5. GPIO 2, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 20, and 21 are available. So the way I chose which pins to use, I looked up one of these references where they mention things like strapping pins. For example, if I want to use GPIO 2 for something, I can't connect it to something that will pull it low when I'm powering up because it needs to be high. Same with GPIO 8. And then some of the other pins are shared with other onboard features of the module, so we don't want to use those. So I went looking here on this list of other GPIO that don't seem to be too much of a problem to use, and I made my selection from there. I'm going to reset this again. Since this display uses the ST7789 driver, I went with the Adafruit library here that supports that driver. And I modified one of the examples, the one I'm running right now, just to put the specific GPIO pins that I'm using. And I put this on GitHub, I'll link to it. So the CS pin on the display, I'm putting on GPIO 21. The reset is pin 5, DC is 4, and then the other two SPI pins are 6 and 10. So that would be the pins here on the header. So 6 is right there. 10 is right there, and so on. So those are coming over to the display along with where I tapped in for 3.3 volts and I used one of the ground pins. And in my copy of this Adafruit example, of course, I'm choosing the ST7789 initialization line. The original example comes with some options. So I'm initializing with these specific pins that I selected. And one thing I'm doing differently is I'm adding this TFT rotation for the display. Number two, I think, is what rotates at 180 degrees. Originally, this had the text and everything upside down, just the way I have it plugged into the breadboard. So rotation of two gets it upright. So once I knew I had this demo working and I knew how to get text on the screen, 
I went over to the actual code for this mega tester and I added in anything to do with the TFT display. So I started out with this define statement. If I comment that out, I haven't even tried this, but it should choose not to use this display at all and just use the built-in OLED. The OLED will work no matter what at the same time as this. Throughout the code, anywhere that I'm going to do anything with the TFT, I'm using this if defined statement and end if. So everything in between should only be executed if I defined in the first place that I do want to use this display. Otherwise, the code ignores all of these and it will compile just looking at OLED code. I'm setting up those pins that control this display. Then if I just scroll down somewhere else as an example, in the setup function, if we defined we're using a TFT, set it up, rotate it so it's upright and everything needed. And then down throughout the functions, again, when we're showing a menu on the OLED, at the same time, we check if we defined that we are using the TFT, and if so, print some text on there as well as the OLED. So I'm just setting my color as green and printing text to the TFT when needed. So one thing to point out is this fill rectangle that I'm doing. I'm using the fill rectangle to overwrite text on this display when I want to write something new in place of it. I tried different things like the way I'm doing it on the OLED. I'll go back to where I already wrote text and I'll print out spaces, setting the foreground and background color so that it will black it out. I tried doing all kinds of things like that with the TFT. I just couldn't get it to work properly. And one of the methods I'm seeing on deleting text is to just draw a box over it. And that is slow, so I'd like to find a better way, but for now I'm just trying to get things working. So I need to upload this code, and just as a review, how I have everything set up, ESP32 C3 dev module is what I'm using. I need to choose what port it's on. USB enabled. I think everything else is just left as default. And I have this other module here as an example to use. We have the two buttons here. This is boot and this is reset. So I'm just going to quickly upload the sketch in a minute, but I don't know if it has anything to do with using the certain GPIO, but sometimes I cannot upload without having to use the boot and reset pins, as you sometimes have to do on other ESP modules. So if this gives me some sort of serial error in the Arduino IDE when I'm trying to upload, I'll try uploading a second time, and while it's compiling, I'll press down both boot and reset, and when the IDE says uploading, it'll start looking for the module, so then I release reset, then release boot, and it should find it, and it's in programming mode for sure, and it uploads a lot more reliably. So I'm going to do this now and see how it goes. So it's compiling, and it's working this time, so I don't have to do the manual reset. Now with the TFT code in the sketch, both displays are on, and if I move the rotary encoder to redraw something on the menu, we'll see this kind of peel down to being overwritten black, and then the new text will come on. So that's something I would hope I can figure out how to fix later, but if I do this, we can see it's responding slowly, but at least it's working. So now, if I run this test for the RJ12, I just have one wire in here to generate a fail open as well as a fail short, and we'll see on the display it's all flickery because it's constantly trying to overwrite with a blank rectangle and then write the text again, but it is working, so that's the main thing I was trying to get going for now. And now with more lines available, I can put either more graphical images or just more informative text. So I just wanted to get all this up and running, and there's always room for improvement.